So I thought it'd be fun to use this one, the exotic mahogany U bass uh, with the round wound strings. I haven't used this one in a minute. So feel free to leave requests and do whatever. And I'll go ahead and play something. Hey, press. Preston, it's a tiny piece of sponge. Do you see it closely? It's just there to kind of mute the strings for playing uh, double thump things for like the uh, classical thump Victor Wooten thing I was doing before. Just kind of left it there because it's kind of nice having the extra muting. guys would like to hear you can uh, pick a genre I can create something to that or um, if you just have any questions let me know Tried doing that before. So the thing with prog rock is like, um, there are a lot of different ways to approach it to consider it that. So the question is, are we trying to imitate a certain band or, um, trying to do weird a weird time signature because I can't do like a bunch back to back with the loop pedal, um, you know, because I have to start a loop and end the loop. So what kind of thing will we do there? A Christmas Carol. Hmm, and jazz it up a bit. That's a good one, too. playing a little bit of it there but yeah um i thought i'd play a little bit of that for for the um for the prog rock for the prog rock there so let's see how's a slide sound or feel compared to flat or rubber strings okay so i made a review video with this and some people um don't agree with me on this but to me 
if you're sliding on most of the strings, it's fine, right? Like you'll hear a little more string noise. You'll hear a little bit more of the frets and, you know, because of the piezo pickup, the strings are a little bit noisy. I'd say it's easier to slide and tune on these than the rubber strings, because when you slide on those, it bunches up a little bit of it. It makes the string go a little bit flat. But um, but with these, it's not not like that as much. However, sliding on the E string to me has a lot of extra friction to it. So if you do a bunch of slides on the E string, it might wear your finger out a little bit. Um, I was saying it might rip the skin a little bit because one time um, I had that happen on this. And I think it's because the gauge of the string is a little bit thicker. And these are the silver plated ones. So maybe it's not like that if they aren't silver plated. But um, yeah, so there's... So um, it's a little harder to slide on the E string. So most of the time I end up using the flat wound strings for that reason, because it's a lot easier to slide on those if I want to slide a lot. Okay, so um, let's see, Matt. So uh, I think there's a uh, Matt on here had a question about them as well. Do you prefer the metal round wounds for the U base? I've considered replacing stock strings for a while, but not sure where to go. I'll tell you what each one's better for, and I have a video that kind of goes over this too. I think if you want to do a lot of slap bass, you're going to want these. So you're going to want the round wounds for that. Or if you're doing harmonics, I think these are the best for harmonics too. And uh, you got to remember these strings on here are about four years old, so they don't have quite the brightness as they would if they were brand new. be five years old. I don't even know. Right. Oh. Yeah. So they have a little bit more, a little bit more of the harmonics ringing out, although you have to set the tone right to get them to really ring out. I could probably turn the highs up on here too if I wanted to really get them to come out. But for that, it's better. All right, so um, let's ignore or report however it works on here, the spam. Let's go with uh, report on the commercial content. Or, yeah, probably the second one. Okay. Yeah, if anybody wants to um, to report any of that that stuff, uh, if it comes up in the chat, um, let me know. <laughs> but um, thank you, appreciate you guys. But yeah, so if you're doing sort of slap bass, um, I think for picking, it's probably if you're if you're going to use a pick, you don't really want to use a pick on the rubber strings. It kind of sticks to that. I made a video on that a while ago too, uh, somewhere. If you're curious as to how how difficult it is. And I think I, I said, if you're going to use it on the rubber strings, you have to angle the pick a little bit so that there's less friction. But um, to me, if you're going to use a pick, the flat wounds and these, both the metal kinds of strings work pretty good for that. Um, so going over a couple of the other things other than that, um, they removed the one comment, but not the person from the thing. Um, but yeah, okay, I've considered replacing stock strings for a while, but not sure where to go. So you have a lot of options. There are the metal round wounds. There's even a nylon set of round wounds that Golly Strings makes. Then um, there's a whole bunch of different options with the um, polyurethane strings. Um, uh, Aquila has the Thunder Reds, Thunder Browns, Thunder Blacks. Then Akala um, has the um, Pahoe Hoe. So there are all these different ones. But, um, but then you have uh, the flat wound strings, which I have them on this base back here. The flat wounds are smoother. So when you do this, they're metal, but they're wound in a way that there aren't ridges. So therefore, when you slide on these, it's, it's easier to slide smoother rather than here. You know, your fingers might get caught up on it a little bit more. Not too bad, but a little bit more. And then um, the other downside to these strings is there's a lot of extra like clicking when you play. And then 
and right now something is rattling and I'm not sure what that is, but that wasn't happening before. So that's not a normal thing. Yeah, there we go. It's not rattling as much now, but you do hear string noise. And um, like I said, these strings are pretty broken in, so they don't have as much there. Okay, so I'm going to get back to the request. I hope, I hope that helps you pick um, which kind of strings you like better. Uh, thanks for watching, Matt. So um, we've got Joy to the World. How, do I, how would I jazz up Joy to the World a little bit? I guess I could do like um, a tapping version or something maybe. Or um, That's the still G. I don't think I can do the whole thing on harmonics. I can just do the first word. Yeah, there's no, there's no uh, other note there to do that. But yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Hmm. I can't think of a good way to jazz it up, honestly. I could try like a tapping version too. That's the other option. Victor Wooten probably would find a way to do it with all harmonics. Yeah, so tapping Joy to the World, it probably worked better on the polyurethane strings to get these notes to come out louder. Um, but honestly, part of it's also just that my action's a little high for that. Oh, hey, how's it going, Ramona? <laughs> so does anyone else have a, um, a request like that? Hopefully that was okay, I'm trying to do Joy to the World like that. I hope that was nice. Let me look through here and see if, if I've missed any. Let's see. I could try a different uh, Christmas carol, but if you guys have like a genre or something that you'd like to hear, one person could name a genre, another one could name a key, and um, we could just do that. <laughs> Could keep going with the uh Yeah, uh. 
uh, so the Jocko version of Blackbird would be an A, so that one would be kind of harder to do. I'd have to do the uh, more like the original, I guess, staying in G. Yeah, Norwegian Wood. I can't do Victor's version, but I could probably do something. I had a good version of Carol of the Bells. It's funny that I can't even remember how I how I did it, but that's a good one too. <laughs> Let me think. Let me think of how I did that one. Um, I can't remember what key I did it. Did I do it in A or E? How did I do it? Um, this is kind of funny because I know I just posted this one a little while ago. Let me think for a second. Maybe I did it in. I want to say I did it in A minor. I can't remember how I did it. <laughs> I must have done it higher in a different key. I didn't do it in E, though. Let me see. I should try it in every key until it feels right. can't remember what I did for that part. I'm going to cheat and find the tabs for my own music. That's a good request. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Pull the PDF up. How did I do it before? Okay, that last one was right. I did it in D minor. And then I did... Um, okay. It's funny. I, sometimes when I come up with these, I practice them for a while. And then um, if I haven't played them in, what is this, two years now? Then that kind of thing happens. I know I reposted it recently, but it was actually uh, an older video. I uh, made into a short. Let's see if I can shrink that down so I can see it all. Okay, and that's what I get for trying to do it without practicing. <laughs> Did you have to do any modifications to the uke to put on steel strings? This one I actually bought with the strings already on. Um, when I put the flat wounds on this one, I had to make the groove under the E string a little bit wider so that that, would, that E string would fit because the flat wound strings are just a little bit wider than round wounds. This one actually came with metal round wounds originally too. So I never put round wounds on one that had the, um, the polyurethane on it first. So probably, um, 
you, you probably would need a different nut. So a lot of the, a lot of times they recommend for you to replace the nut with a different one. But to be honest, I'm not sure that this one was replaced by the shop that put these on there when I bought it. Um, it might be one made for it, but honestly, the grooves seem like they're wide enough for the for the polyurethane strings. So it might be possible to do that with without too much buzzing, but it may also be that it'll lower the action a little bit if you replace the nut. So you might want to do that. And I'm using a sponge at the nut because I was playing some Victor Wooten stuff earlier. So um, it prevents the open strings from ringing out as loud. Yeah, so I was doing that, and if the sponge wasn't there, those open strings would be ringing out a lot louder. So that's the reason for that. Yeah, the double thump, it's, it takes a lot of time to get that, that little triplet thing going on. You go down with the thumb, then you hammer on to a note, and then you come up with the thumb. So that's what he's doing for all of that stuff. And then you got to work on getting it even. Which I'm honestly still working on. Whoops. Uh, so Ramona, yes, I could probably do that. Well, yet again, that's another one that I did a couple years ago. I started from the wrong one. My brain's just not remembering the melody right. Yeah, so Preston, you said uh, you tried to do the Victor Wooten with the book. I learned it from the book as well. It was kind of cool because he actually made the transcriptions. So he had a way of notating them and it really helped a lot. So I definitely have the, um, I definitely have the um, book as well. I enjoy using that one too. Yeah. Very, very cool. So let's see you know, the way the open E sounds on the E bass. Yeah. Yeah, I like the open E and then the open A too. doing a lot of things where I just kind of where I just kind of use the open string so um, I'll use them as a drone and just kind of play against them and then so occasionally if I'm like if I'm in the key of A uh, minor then I'll like so this part honestly that sounds a lot like a Metallica thing let's see where's
So that's like a bass part from My Friend of Misery. If you've heard uh, that Metallica song, it starts with that. And um, so I like using that concept. Uh, another person that sees that um, idea with the drone, but with a different technique, was Jocko's version of Blackbird that I was trying to play earlier. So he's like dragging his pointer finger through three strings while holding a chord shape. So that'd be like the sixth fret on the G string, seventh fret on the D string, and then the open A string in that order. So you just hold down that shape and then hit an extra note, an extra open A string. So there's that too. Oh, and hi, Fran. How are you doing? Um, so good of you to join us as well. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I know you had a request. I still haven't checked out that song yet, but I need to go back and do that. That'd be good. All right. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I'm really enjoying doing the open strings and kind of using more of a... Um, a finger picking style that I would do on ukulele or guitar, where I'm using my thumb, my pointer finger, and my middle finger. I do it on bass a lot too, but I'm adapting it from uh, ukulele technique. So I'm kind of, so rather than having my hand like anchored and plucking with only my pointer and middle finger, I have my hand tilted a little bit. So I'm using my thumb to play certain strings and then pointer and middle to play other strings. It works really well if you want the strings to ring out. So if you're doing it the other way, it helps to kind of like mute certain strings. But if you have your hand tilted, it's kind of like imitating a guitar or a um, ukulele. Hi, Linda. How's it going? also like a Primus song that uses, uses some of that kind of stuff too. As far as using like the other strings as a drone like that. And then um, another band that uses a lot of notes against a drone is Tool. If you're a fan of the band Tool. that a lot too and yeah they're usually picking um it might get more attack out of each note if i were to pick oh i don't usually pick on you bass like that much <laughs> that sounds like like i'm picking on it but um i'm not bullying my u-bass but sometimes people um people will play with a pick to get more of an attack out of each note so yeah Yep, and so there are a lot of, if you can, um, if you can kind of uh, get past certain elements, like Tool's a little bit of a heavy band, so if you don't like heavier music, then um, it's probably not for you, but it does have some cool bass lines in there if you like that kind of notes ringing out kind of sound, you know. They do that kind of stuff too, or there's a lot of hammer-ons as well, where you just hit the string once, push down with the other finger to get the other notes out. There, so there they're hammering on from the open to the 10th fret to the 12th fret on the D string. So that's kind of cool too. Oh yeah, those wall bases are cool. Good brand. I've never played one, I don't think though. They sound great though. Okay. I'm trying to think of another. This sounds like it would be great for Christmas carols. I'm trying to think of other ones I haven't done yet that that would sound good on. 
Oh, and you said, um, I know Preston said Norwegian Wood earlier. Um, I got to think about how to do it where I can get like a, um, I might do it in a different key just to get the, like. So for this one, I'm doing A major because uh, it's just easier to have that that low pedal tone there. Also sound like a group called Black Man in the World. I'm not familiar with them. I'll have to check that out too. I'm not familiar with that group either. Very cool. But yeah, I also, um, speaking of Tool and Primus, um, Primus does a lot of slap stuff, and so it doesn't really sound too great to try to do it on the um, polyurethane strings and even the uh, flat wounds they don't have quite enough attack on them so i like trying to do um i like trying to do some of that stuff on here so there's a song they have called uh the primus has called tommy the cat and he's like strumming then he's slapping and doing some ghost notes and some fast stuff so he's going like It's really fast, though. It's like. It's really faster than that. But it's kind of kind of tricky to do that. And uh, the bass player on that, uh, y'all are probably familiar with Les Claypool. He can sing. Well, he kind of sings and speaks. He kind of does some combination of two over that pattern. And um, that pattern's hard enough to play, right? Because you're doing two strums, strumming down and then up on a power chord on the D and the G string. So you're going doing like second fret and fourth fret on the D and the G string. And then you're hitting a G on the E string, so third fret on the G string. So then you've got a bunch of slap stuff. It'd be it'd be kind of complicated to like talk through that one, but uh, it's it sounds better on here than it does on the other ones. But it's still a lot more clicky uh, when you don't do it on a full scale bass. And uh, yes, Preston, I actually have have gotten to meet Les Claypool. Yeah, but I haven't um, I haven't gotten to meet Steve Hackett or anything. But um, I have a friend that um, that has an interview show. Sometimes he comes over here and, and hangs out on the stream. Um, my buddy Sean, he has a show where he's um, done Zoom interviews with Steve Hackett maybe three times and several other guitar players. I think uh, ironically, I'm just going to say a bunch of Steve, Steve Morse, too. Uh, he actually got John Anderson on the show one time, the singer of Yes. Uh, he got to talk to, I'm trying to think bass player wise, there were a lot of bass players he got to talk to. If you're familiar with Guy Pratt, Guy Pratt played on a lot of like Madonna stuff and he's just a session player. I want to say he ended up doing some stuff with, um, he was the one that ended up doing stuff with Pink Floyd too, if I'm not mistaken, later on after, um, you know, the, they split apart and everything. I think he was filling in for some of that, if I'm not mistaken. Could be mistaken. Um, but I th think he was. Yeah, so Steve's great. Um, I don't, I don't think I know that one well enough to play that. Sorry. Sorry, Rona. But yeah, yeah, Steve's awesome though. I'll play an original. Keep coming with requests though. Eventually I'll get one that I can do.
many um, Genesis tunes well enough to kind of um, kind of do all that. Silent Night, I actually I think I have a good arrangement of that. Um, it doesn't mean I necessarily doesn't mean I necessarily uh, remember which key I did the arrangement. I'd probably C or something. Uh, how, did I, how did I do it? I can't remember. Wasn't that? I think it is something like that. I don't remember how I ended it. It was something like that. Um, our arrangement ended a little bit differently, but I can't remember what ending I decided to do. I think I used the um, open, open strings to kind of do that. And as far as, uh, let me go back to see some of these requests here. So I got Silent Silent Night right there. Um, Steve Hackett. I don't I don't know what I could pull off Genesis-wise. Probably not much unless I was just playing like the bass line. But some of the bass lines to some of the Genesis tunes are a little bit like from the era that I'm talking about. So I wish I knew the chords that were going against it. Because I know they like to pedal a note, speaking of pedaling notes. I like to move, you know, above. They like doing that kind of stuff, but I don't know what chords they're playing over it. <laughs> well, Fran, you're trying to you're trying to do a duet with me on TikTok. Very cool. I need to um, I need to make more like that so that there's some that are um, a little bit easier to do. Maybe I can come up with stuff like that and then add those those challenges on TikTok and then maybe on my Facebook page I've been neglecting. I have a Facebook page called You Base Challenge. And that would be a good place to put those things too. But that would be really cool. Songs from a brother, where art thou? I've heard Metallica's new song. Um, what I thought of it, I thought they were kind of pulling from like how their first album sounded. So it was a little bit more like a return to the original stuff, but yeah, I'm a Metallica fan. I had a friend that shared, shared that with me. So I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. But maybe I can come up with some, some simpler duet kinds of things and then like have a video where it, where it plays all of it together and then have a second video on, on TikTok probably It'd be a good place to do that, that you could do that with where I just play like the bass part and let you do the melody or vice versa, depending on the song. Okay. So which one I'm forgetting. So, uh, so I mean the other Genesis that I know, which isn't the Genesis that like,
if you're into dun, 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 dun. And that's another one of those things where they have cool chords going on over a note, but I don't know what the chords are. Might just be like, might just be like those two. Let's see. Can't really do those very easily though. I don't recommend trying that. Uh, yes. Yeah, TikTok's kind of fun. It just um, it just takes some uh, getting used to. And for me, it takes a better phone. My phone is so slow on uploading and loading anything on TikTok. It's time for me to get a new one so that I can actually use it correctly and uh, have better quality on there too. But uh, I've been enjoying doing the YouTube stuff. And, you know, I've been making new YouTube shorts that I could totally post there too. Um, on TikTok as well, but I haven't been. I've just been posting them here mostly. And on, on Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? I just, I don't even think about the like chords and the bass parts on that stuff. It's just, and there's only one song that's really coming to mind on that one. So unfortunately, I don't, I don't think I could do anything with that either. Um, let's see. Did I miss any other ones up here? Madonna. <laughs> Oh, and uh, the original from a while ago, Ramona, was um, was called Green Tea. So that one, I actually have a version that I do on upright bass. It's pretty cool, too. I can play that for you at some point. Um, hmm. You'd think I'd be able to figure out how to do all fly away, but I don't, I don't think I can do it right now off the top of my head. And I'm not sure... He said, hot time in the city. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. So, sorry. Okay. Preston said Metallica earlier. I could play more Metallica. Um, their, their first main bass player, like once they started doing songs that people know know right now, is, was Cliff Burton. So they had a bass player before that, but he wasn't on any of the, on the albums. But he was actually a really good bass player. And there's a middle section in a song called Orion. It's pretty fun. So I'm going to play a little bit of that. And even though you didn't really request Metallica, but this part's kind of cool anyway. a lot later than that it's like So there's a little bit of Metallica for you. I'm just going to read through these comments. All about that bass. Yeah, so all about that bass, um, that'll actually kind of work with the um, the bass lines that I was teaching guy, you guys in the course. Anyone that's gone through the course, um, those all about that bass uses arpeggios, but it kind of slides into the notes of the arpeggio. So like... So you could just go... And play an A major arpeggio. But you kind of have to slide into the middle note of that. And I think it hits the first note twice for that. It might go boom, boom, boom. So I'd be like A, A, slide into C sharp, hit an E note, back to C sharp, and then go back to A. And then it does a B minor arpeggio. And then it does an E arpeggio up here. Actually, it might do low. I'm not sure on that one. And then it does that again. So I'm sliding into this note instead of doing the arpeggio here. But it's the same notes. You 
get side on that one too. And then I think it goes down to the low E. And then back to A. Oh, and then uh, a friend says, Larry Graham of Graham Central Station. Oh, he did that one. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, Larry Graham's awesome. As, as much as I don't like the little laser noises that happen in, in the song, uh, the song Pow, I think that's a Graham Central Station one too, right? Um, I know it's Larry Graham, but um, I'm pretty sure it's Graham Central Station doing uh, the song Pow. If you've ever heard that one, it's got some really cool slap, slap lines in it, but I never learned it, so I can't play that one. Um, is the Beverly Hillbillies, I'm trying to remember, is that the... Um, Is that, is that that one? I'm going to do it higher up. I think that's a weird place to do it. No. We'll see. I can't remember the ending. I can't remember the end of it. For whatever reason, my brain's not remembering the melody at all. I'm making it up at that point. Oops. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, some slap songs, just if y'all haven't heard them, things that are kind of cool. If y'all listen to Stanley Clark, he has a song called Silly Putty. And um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Les Claypool covered it with Primus. And he did a cool, cool version of it. It. No. Sorry, the body of the bass is getting getting in the way. Let me try it again. I think I did it too early. It's there, I think it's uh, I can't remember it all. Shoot, but that's a good one, too. Oh, Green Bag, that was the one that you wanted me to listen to earlier on. It, I'll have to check that out and try it with the upright. It sounds fun. Well, guys, thank y'all so much for hanging out. Um, if you have any like last minute questions about anything, let me know. Once again, these were the round wound strings, so they, they're the ones with the ridges on them. <laughs> So they, they have the most string noise probably of all the strings, and they're a little more clacky than other ones, but they're probably the best for slap. Um, they're pretty good for picking. I think it's a kind of a toss-up. It's whether you like the flat wound sound or the round wound sound if you're going to use a pick on U-Bass. Um, and then for for harmonics, I think they have the, the best harmonics, although when the strings are new, these are pretty old. So thank you all for hanging out with me. I hope you all have enjoyed kind of playing along with some of this stuff and just, just, um, yeah, I hope you all are having fun playing um, other things. Oh, no, I've got like a last minute. That sounds like a last minute request.
<laughs> yeah, so that's, I can't really, this is about all I can do of the, um, the Victor Wooten ha version has a lot of cool stuff in there, but um, I never learned that one entirely. So I like did the very beginning of it and then just kind of did my own thing with it. That's not quite as cool as what he's doing. A simplified version kind of. But yeah, that was a great request. That was a good one to do with harmonics for sure. <laughs> I mean, if you if you really wanted to, my my cash app is the same as the channel, you know. Just Stephen Cox bass, all one word, as uh with the little you know symbol in front of it. But but don't feel like you have to or anything. I just do this the first Thursday of each month. So um, feel free to just tune in next time. Oh, you can also, um, there are also ways to, to do it on the chat if you've ever if you've ever done that before. There's super chats and things. But um, thank you all so much for hanging out. I hope you've uh, either learned something or heard something that you liked. And if you have any other questions, you can always leave them in the comments below once the video turns into a real video if you're catching this after the stream. And um, I will see you guys probably next Tuesday, hopefully. I'm trying to get back onto some sort of schedule for you guys uh, with the, with the normal videos. Now that the course is done and uh, I might make some shorts in between now and then that's the, that's the goal. We'll see if I get to it. Um, but thank you all so much for tuning in and I will see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>